welcome to a new episode of Cultural Magazine where we get you the latest cultural events taking place here around the nation. Stay tuned for more on the most recent cultural events taking place here in Egypt. of international cooperation and from the heart of Cairo, the Embassy of Azerbaijan in Egypt is celebrating its Independence Day. Stay tuned for more on this very special event. On the occasion of the Independence Day of the Embassy of Azerbaijan in Egypt, we're delighted to be joined by Ambassador of Azerbaijan in Egypt, Mr. Elkan Polokov. Thank you very much for joining us, sir, here on Nile TV International. Uh, sir, I would like uh, first uh, to congratulate you on this occasion, and I would like you to highlight to us uh, how did Azerbaijan uh, reach its independence, how did the people of Azerbaijan restore their independence? As I mentioned during uh, opening the speech, uh, it is 106th anniversary of our independence, which means that in 1918, first time Azerbaijan proclaimed his independence as a first in the democratic republic and Muslim world. But uh, after two years, uh, Azerbaijan was conquered by Bolshevik Russia, and we remained around 70 years part of the Soviet Union. But in 1991, we succeed to restore our independence and its uh, current Azerbaijan Republic is continuation of Democratic Republic of Azerbaijan. It was a very difficult way for independence to have to do independence, but we succeed with that. Uh, Egypt and Azerbaijan have strong historical uh, relations. Uh, would you please highlight uh, how are we boosting those uh, historical uh, relations uh, on the economic, political, and also social and cultural? Uh, you correctly mentioned that we have a relation which go deep to the history. Uh, a lot of Azerbaijanis in medieval time pilgrim to the Egypt, stay here, become Egyptian, uh, but they have a uh, deep Azerbaijani roots. Uh, but besides that, uh, when Azerbaijan regained its independence, 1991, one of the first countries who recognized independence of my country was Egypt. And since then, we built very intensive cooperation between two countries in all spheres. Uh, our late president, uh, national leader Haider Ali, paid his first visit to the African continent to the Egypt in 1994. And his uh, successor, uh, current president Ilham Ali, also paid his uh, official visit to the Egypt in 2007. Similarly, last year we had the honor to receive uh, His Excellency President Al Sisi in Baku. It was the first time one president of Egypt visited my country. Besides that, we had a number of events, mutual events in different sphere, culture, uh, sports, uh, art, music, uh, concert, and etc. etc. But uh, as I mentioned in my speech, unfortunately, economic relation between two countries is not corresponding to the level of political relation, cultural relation. That's why uh, we had a lot of uh, things to do in this area, plenty of things to, to do, put our efforts to increase it, to bring it to the proper level.
Great. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, uh, Azerbaijan has been witnessing a great economic and uh, social uh, reform after its independence. Uh, would you tell me more about the current uh, social and economic reform taking place in Azerbaijan? Yes, as I mentioned, when we regained our independence in 1991, uh, we immediately faced the challenges from neighboring Armenia. Around 20% of our territory was under the occupation for almost 30 years. But uh, with steady development of our, under the wise leadership of our presidents, late pre President Gaydar Aliyev and current President Ilham Aliyev, we become champion and leader in our region. Azerbaijan now enjoying the biggest economy, the strongest economy, uh, compared with our neighbors, Armenia or Georgia. Uh, we are leading investors to the many countries around our region. Uh, Azerbaijan put his step uh, fit to the many places, many countries, through his investment policy in Europe, in Asia. Uh, we are looking for another opportunities in African continents to become more visible here. Uh, that's why I think we have to uh, pay more attention uh, to the economic side because after the restoring the peace and sovereignty uh, over the old territory of Azerbaijan, we are looking for friendly countries who can come with their technologies and we are also ready to come to share our experience. And this year we are hosting COP29, which is a very important event of United Nations. And, uh, Egypt, uh, who hosted it in uh, COP27, had a lot of things to share uh, with us and is already do that and continue to do uh, doing this. And we are really appreciate this support and this approach. Uh, sir, uh, talking more about uh, Egypt-Azerbaijani relations and uh, uh, relations of Azerbaijan with the Middle East, which has uh, historical ties also, uh, how would you like to elaborate on the current conflicts taking place in the Middle East? You know, unfortunately, we are living in a very fragile world uh, with in a very difficult situation when the number of conflicts is increasing. Uh, the only conflict which was resolved, it was Armenian-Azerbaijan conflict, which we succeed to resolve. But beside that, every day we see new and new conflicts coming, especially in Middle East. We hope and we believe that all the conflicts must be settled by peaceful means, uh, by keeping the life of people safe, uh, we are again uh, living in a situation when without uh, following the international law, we cannot succeed. And from that perspective, we are calling all the parties of all the conflicts to follow the international law, to pay respect to the sovereignty and territorial integrity of independent countries, and support the legally elected and legally chosen by people governments. because of the fact that uh, Azerbaijan is one very beautiful country. I used to go to Azerbaijan. I, this country is very friendly to Bosnia and Herzegovina. Traditionally, we have a lot of similarities and uh, uh, we have a good, uh, a good, very good bilateral relations. And uh, what else I want to say is that uh, this is about national days, about this kind of event. That's tradition. That's a long history tradition in international relations. It's uh, from... from uh, uh, previous centuries, people are gathering together, talk about uh, international relations, about bilateral relations, about uh, international uh, problems, and uh, with those events are excellent opportunity, opportunity for people to, to discuss, even sometimes to solve some problems. I want to remind that uh, 
my president, President of Bosnia and Herzegovina was recently in Egypt. It was uh, maybe 12, 13 days. President visited, visited and I was very proud of that. I am also very proud of, of, uh, of the, the meeting that our president has uh, with, uh, with President of, uh, of Egypt. And uh, this will be good opportunity for both countries to enhance bilateral relations that are traditionally very good. We have a long history of uh, cooperation, a long history of friendship, and uh, now this, what, we, what is happening now, is a good opportunity to, to, to uh, upgrade our, 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 our relations and uh, to, to you know, put that, that in the even, even higher level. Absolutely, Egypt uh, is uh, uh, one of the uh, m countries which hosts the uh, highest number of diplomatic representations in the world. As far as I know, 145 embassies are present in Cairo. This shows the importance and the critical role uh, all the countries around the world attach to their diplomatic relations uh, to Egypt. Therefore, the diplomatic life here is uh, very active, and uh, if you consider that 145 countries, all of them, all the, uh, of their embassies, uh, organize their national days, it means uh, 145 days of national day receptions uh, in one year. These gatherings, of course, on occasion, first and foremost, to celebrate, to recognize and to congratulate uh, the friendly countries' uh, national days, usually independence, but on some occasion, constitutional day or flag day or some other occasion. So in Turkey's case, it is our national day, a republic day when we declared our republic. So these occasions uh, bring together uh, the diplomatic community. Uh, you know, most of the embassies attend each other's gathering. Uh, every country uh, in its reception showcases that usually music, cultural assets. They play both their national anthems and Egyptian national anthem. And uh, also, of course, the receptions are attended by leading personalities from the Egyptian society, artists, uh, politicians, uh, ministers, former ministers, uh, businessmen especially. So. Uh, they mingle uh, with each other, they talk about what's going on in diplomatic and political affairs in and around the region. Uh, they establish contacts, uh, they get to know each other. Per it's personal relationships are uh, established on these occasions. So uh, the receptions by the embassies are uh, part and parcel of uh, uh, Kaira uh, social life indeed. And uh, it also has this cultural uh, effect because, first and foremost, uh, the hosting country organizes and then showcases cultural assets, sometimes uh, traditional dance, sometimes traditional music. So, uh, and also it is an occasion where people get together, get to know each other, uh, say hello, and then exchange views and opinions, and then establish new contacts and friendships. Azerbaijan uh, has a deep-rooted uh, cultural tradition. In Turkey, we consider Azerbaijani cultural and artistic traditions are very rich and in many uh, aspects uh, further advanced than Turkey. For example, uh, an opera and uh, this kind of classical music, uh, Azerbaijan is so rich and then has actually, uh, you know, uh, risen, raised uh, so great artists, especially singers and uh, uh, traditional uh, instrument players, uh, uh, they are great in that, and uh, Azerbaijani uh, art and culture and uh, uh, songs are loved in Turkey. So, uh, you know, we have, we share uh, a common language with Azerbaijan, and uh, uh, I hope uh, that uh, uh, considering uh, that uh, common cultural heritage that we enjoy between Turkey and Egypt, uh, Azerbaijan 
uh, finds the same, you know, uh, common uh, bond, and I, I can observe that uh, the relationship uh, between uh, Azerbaijan and Egypt are fast developing. There has been mutual visits. His Excellency President Sisi visited uh, Azerbaijan for the first time in history, and then uh, His Excellency President of Azerbaijan, Haider Aliyev, Ilham Aliyev, uh, rather, visited uh, uh, Egypt. Uh, the relations are fast developing, and then we will see, considering the rich heritage of both countries in arts and culture, uh, I, I'm pretty sure that uh, the exchange between uh, Egypt and Azerbaijan uh, offers a great uh, promise uh, and potential. So, as I said, I, I really want to emphasize that how advanced and how rich Azerbaijan in terms of culture, arts, and especially uh, music. That's so inspiring. In fact, I have to add, for example, that uh, considering Azerbaijan's uh, full potential and experts, high-level uh, artists, uh, in Turkey we have recruited many Azerbaijani uh, musicians, uh, you know, uh, players of like uh, piano and in fact some professors uh, to be employed in uh, Turkey's universities to teach music. So Azerbaijan is a great country, just like Egypt, great country of arts, culture and music. Egypt uh, is uh, the leading center of the uh, Arabic uh, and regional uh, culture. Uh, traditionally so, uh, the uh, Arabic music was, uh, the modern Arabic music was born and then uh, in fact uh, progressed, uh, starting from Mimi Gülsüm in Egypt. Uh, Arabic cinema, Egyptian cinema was one of the leading uh, cinemas all over the world at the time. Uh, still, of course, a very strong uh, cinema tradition exists in Egypt. It is true for painting, uh, sculpture, opera, you know, uh, classical Western music. Uh, so, therefore, uh, uh, Egypt's col and, uh, and of course, we have to add the architecture, uh, cultural heritage in terms of, uh, you know, religious heritage, cultural heritage, uh, the buildings, monuments, uh, the cemeteries. So therefore, uh, Egypt is an ancient Egypt, of course, pyramids and uh, uh, Luxor and Aswan. Uh, these uh, create an environment of culture, uh, uh, thought, and uh, uh, also arts. So therefore, uh, one finds an extremely rich environment of culture and arts, and they're very inspiring. So therefore, I think that uh, for any country, uh, Egypt offers a uh, rich uh, uh, source uh, for cultural exchange and collaboration. So therefore, of course, uh, Turkey is uh, probably the, uh, the country who has most uh, cultural, historical and, uh, cultural and historical tie with Egypt. Uh, wherever you go, you have a uh, you know, touch of uh, Turkishness or t uh, common Turkish and Egyptian cultural heritage in everything. So therefore, uh, of course, we are uh, looking forward to uh, enhance uh, this cultural cooperation. Uh, it's very
From Bus 4 to the Nile concert featured a selection of Egyptian and Turkish compositions in a form of chamber music. Other great proof that music is a universal language and that culture can build strong ties between different countries. Shuru Bikir, Cultural Magazine. That wraps up this edition of Culture Magazine, where we brought you the latest cultural events taking place here in Egypt.